Okay, well, Emily, I don't know if anybody else is going to join. So here's um, what I've got about a 10 minute video on the polynomials that I'll, I'll put that on. And if people join in while the video is going, that's okay. And then when that's over, I can just answer questions for you if you need some questions and we can work on whatever you need to work on. Okay, perfect. Okay, let me see if I can get the video going. Okay, so we're going to talk about polynomials. Can you hear that, Emily? Polynomials yes. Be adding and subtracting. Okay. But first, we probably better look at some vocabulary. If you have something like this, 4x plus 2, that's a polynomial. It's actually a binomial. <laughs> There's two terms. Terms are the parts of the polynomial that are separated with pluses or minuses. Here's another example of a polynomial. If I have 6x squared plus 3x minus 5, that one's got three terms. 6x squared is a term, 3x is a term, and minus 5 is a term. The terms are the part that are separated with plus and minus. And when you have a polynomial, if there's like terms, they can be combined up. Okay, like terms are terms that have exactly the same variable part. For example, 4x and 12x. Those are like terms. Here's another set of like terms. 5y squared and 2 thirds y squared. Those are like terms. The variable part matches exactly. Here's another mm. set of like terms. Negative xy and 7xy. The variable part, xy, matches exactly. Even these are like terms, 8 and 12. There's no variable, there's no variable. That's called a constant term. Like terms can be combined up together. So if you've got a polynomial expression like this, 7x minus 4y plus 3x plus 6y, there's some like terms there that can be combined up together to write this simpler. When I look for like terms, I've got another colored pen here, I'm just going to circle up. This 7x and this 3x are like terms. They have the same variable part. Notice I took the sign that was in front along with it. That 7x okay. is really a positive. Check out the y terms. Here's some like terms. Minus 4y and plus 6y. I can combine up those like terms. The ones that are in the red circle, the x terms, 7x plus 3x, I can combine those up by adding up the coefficients, 7 plus 3 10 x 7 x 3 x 10 x now check out the ones that are in the green box minus 4 y and plus 6 y think about that minus 4 negative 4 plus 6 if you're at negative 4 on a number line to the right 6 going to go past 0 to 2. It's plus positive 2y. 7x plus 2y. There's that expression simplified. Here's another example of a polynomial expression that you can simplify by combining up the like terms. 
I have negative 3 plus 5n minus n minus 12. First thing I want to do is think about like terms. The terms that are like can be combined up together. I see a negative 3 and a minus 12. I also see some n terms, plus 5n minus 1n. Plus 5n minus 1n. I can combine up the like terms. Oh. So n to the first power will come before the, the constant term in numbers. So I'm going to do what's in the box first. 5n minus 1n. That's 4n. Now the plain numbers. Minus 3, minus 12. Minus 3, negative 3, minus 12. It goes farther into the negatives. If it's 3 minus 12, that's mm -hmm. negative 15. Okay. When I combine up those like terms, it turns into a binomial, a linear binomial. n to the first power is the biggest exponent. And there's two terms there. When you simplify an expression, you combine up the like terms. Sometimes you have to subtract the like terms. If you have something like this, function notation. If f of x equals 2x squared minus 6x plus 12, and g of x equals x squared plus 10x minus 11, and the directions or the question is, find this, f of x minus g of x. That looks confusing. There's a whole lot of variables there. I'm going to take this function, 2x squared minus 6x plus 12, and subtract this function, x squared plus 10x minus 11. So first I'm going to write it all out. 2x squared minus 6x plus 12, there's f of x, minus, I'm going to put parentheses here, g of x, x squared plus 10x minus 11. See that minus outside the parentheses? That's important. I have to distribute that minus to everything in the parentheses. So here's what it's going to be. 2x squared minus 6x plus 12. I pretty much just copied that. Here's where it gets tricky. Minus x squared minus 10x. Look at closely, minus, minus, plus 11. Check out those signs. When I subtract everything in the parentheses there, minus x squared, minus 10x, minus negative, 11, plus 11. Now I'm going to combine up the like terms. Let me see if I can see some that match. 2x squared and minus x squared. Those are like terms. Those will combine up together. Minus 6x and minus 10x. Those are like terms. Those will combine up together. And plus 12 and plus 11. Those are like terms. Those will combine up together. I'm going to start with what's in the red circle. 2x squared minus 1x squared. It helps me to think of that one. 2 minus 1. That's 1x squared. You don't have to show the 1. Now what's in the blue squares? Negative 6x minus 10x. Negative 6 
minus 10. That's going to go farther into the negatives, negative 16x. And last of all, the constant terms, the ones that are underlined, plus 12, plus 11, plus 23. When I subtract those two functions that I started with, f of x minus g of x, there they are, here's what it simplifies to be, this trinomial. It's a quadratic trinomial. The highest exponent is x squared, so it's quadratic trinomial because there's one, two, three terms. The terms are separated by the plus. When you are looking at polynomials, it's conventional to write them in descending order, highest one first, then the next highest, plus x to the first, then no x is at all. And you can combine up the like terms, terms that have the same exact variable parts. Added or subtracted. Okay, so I, I've got, can, can you guys hear me? We've got some new people in. Yes. I got, is that Emily? Yes. Let me see who else is here. Oh, if you joined while we were watching the video, take your mute off so we can talk. Okay. Hi, Lillian. Hi. Sorry, I was kind of confused by what she was saying on whatever that big word was that meant her combining all that. Okay, I'm going to go over a couple more now. Just a second. I'm trying to get rid of the, the video here. There we go. Okay, there we go. So can you guys see me now? Yes. Yes. I can see you the whole time. Perfect. Okay. So we've got Lillian and Emily. Anybody else here? And Deborah. I know. Okay. So Lillian, what was your question again? So it was telling why I, I couldn't understand the word. It was a big word where she was putting all the equations together. She said, this is what it means when you combine all of this. I want to say I started with a T, but I'm probably incorrect. Or, well, maybe like terms? Yeah. Okay, so here's basically a term is separated by pluses and minuses. So if you have something like this, 3x plus 6, right? You see that? Yes. There's two terms there, 3x and 6. Okay. Those won't combine together because they are not like terms. But if I have something like this, 3x plus 6 plus 10x, I've got three terms there on the bottom. But the, those will combine up together. The 3x, let me see if I can get this on the screen. There. The 3x and the 10x combine up together that'll make 13x plus six. Okay. When you've got terms that are like terms, you can combine them together. I can see it the whole time. Yeah, you are okay. <laughs> Good. There we go. I'm trying to find the camera. Okay. So the whole lesson here is about combining up like terms. Okay. If you've got something like this, here's a tougher one. Negative 2x plus 5y plus 8x minus y. 
So look at that one. Take a second. You guys, if you've got some paper, write it down. 2x plus 5y plus 8x minus y. And I would circle and that and see squares on the different terms, correct? Okay. I like to do it that way. I mean, that's not really part of the math, but it helps me see what's going on. So right. I would circle up the x and square up the y's. Remember, the sign in front goes along with it. Okay, so I'll let you do that, and I'll do it too. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Yeah, Emily? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, so now it looks kind of like this. We've got the ones in the circle. We can combine those together. Negative 2x plus 8x. Negative 2 plus 8. That makes 6x. So the first part is 6x. Now look at what's in the, the boxes. 5y minus 1y. I filled in that one. That's helpful to me. So 5y minus 1y, 5 minus 1, that's 4y. So the simplified answer is 6x plus 4y. When you simplify, you don't get an actual number answer. You just write it simpler than it was. That's simpler than the whole big, long algebra that I had to start with. Okay. okay. Here's a, another example. Oh, here, this one's a hard one. Big, long one. Okay. 3x squared plus 7x minus 4x squared plus 12 plus 3x. So look across and see if you see ones that are alike. And remember, the sign in front goes along with it. Okay, I'm going to do this one too. So that leaves 12 all alone, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah, very good. Very good. So when you look for the like terms, we've got 3x squared, and it matches up with minus 4x squared. Those will combine up. Okay. We've got 7x and 3x, plus 7x and plus 3x. Those will combine up. And the plus 12 is just going to be hanging out there by itself. And when you write down the answers, usually they go down in descending order. So I'm going to start with the x squared, 3x squared minus 4x squared. That makes minus 1x squared. Now you can put square, it in like the one. Two, I'm sorry to take up your whole lesson. Like where it says 2, does that mean like 3 times 2? No. The x squared is the variable part and 3x squared minus 4x squared is just negative 1x squared. Later okay. on if, if you figured out what x is you go negative whatever x times itself because squared means x times x. Okay. Now so, like yeah. in, in, a, in yeah. a test like if we was taking a test can we put x I mean, can we put one instead of X, or it's always got to be X? 
if there's no number in front, you can always put a one there. Like this okay. negative here, I could write in a one. Some mathematicians just get lazy and leave that out. But okay. it, it always has a one there. Okay. And let's see, what are the X's? When you look on this one, look at the X's, the plain X's, not X squared. I see seven okay. X and three X. When I combine those together, plus seven plus three, that makes plus 10 X. And that 12 doesn't have anything to pair up with. There it is, all simplified. Negative one X squared plus 10 X plus 12. All right. When you combine with like terms, you're not going to get a, a number answer like, like 32. You're, you're going to get a, it's just making this big long algebra simpler by combining up the ones that go together. You have to practice with that adding and subtracting those negative numbers though. That takes a little stopping yeah. and thinking. Let's look at one. Yeah, it does. That's hard. And you can use a calculator if you want, but be careful, it's still hard with those signed numbers. Okay, let me write a new one. What about one like this? Okay, I made a big, long monster problem. Okay, it says 4x minus 12 plus 1x squared plus, oh, I put n. Why did I mix x's and n's? Well, that was weird. Okay, well, we've got some x's and n's. I wrote it funny. So we have a lot, this, this is not gonna get a whole lot shorter. Plus 3n minus 8n plus two. So when you, I only see one X squared. So that one's the only one of those. Since I wrote it wrong, there's only one X term too, four X so plus four X. These will combine up though. This one and this one will combine together. Plus 3n minus 8n. Can you do that in your head? Plus 3 minus 8. It's going to go below zero, right? 3 minus 8. It's going to be negative 5. Uh. And then uh, plus 2 and minus 12, those guys go together. This one and this one go together. Minus 12 plus 2. If you're at negative 12 and you add 2, you're not even going to get back to 0. Negative 12 plus 2, you'll get a little closer to 0. It'll be negative 10. There it is, simplified. That was my mistake though. I meant to put all the same variables that I didn't. Okay. So at the end of the video there, I showed some subtracting and that gets a little trickier too. Here's a subtracting problem. Let's start with the easy subtracting problem first. Okay. Look at this one. Let me make a nice thing everybody can do. Okay, here's a subtracting problem. 7x plus 6 minus, and then see the parentheses? Yeah. 3x minus 1. That's what makes it tricky is that minus there has to be distributed to both of the things in the parentheses. So I like to, in fact, I'm going to take another colored pen and even show it. I like to show that I'm going to distribute that minus to both of the things in the parentheses. Okay. 
Okay. So this is going to say 7x plus 6 minus 3x plus 1. I'm going to write that down and go over it. So oh. here's what it's going to say. 7x plus 6 minus 3x plus 1. Now look at that closely. The 7x right. minus 6, I just copied those down. Hello, did somebody just join us? Maybe? I don't know. Okay. So 7x minus 6, I just wrote those down. Let's see that minus. I went minus 3x and then minus negative 1. That changes to a plus 1. Can you, how, how does that happen? Because I was kind of confused how the negative went to a positive. Is it because there's two negative which makes a positive? Correct. Am I yes. right? Okay. Okay. So okay. Negative 2x makes negative 3x, and negative, negative 1 makes plus 1. That gets really tricky. Okay. Yeah, and that's now, what I'm Do you see the like terms? Thank you, Emily. I'm glad I'm not the Hello. only one who is asking questions. No, not at all. Hard. Dude, please, you guys, that's the whole point of this is so you can ask some questions and, and listen to other people's questions. You're, you're doing great. Okay, so now do you see some like terms? We write uh, this instead of 7x plus 6 minus 3x plus 1. Would put Wouldn't it be simpler to combine up these two? Yeah, you'd put squares around the 7x and the 3x and then circles around the plus okay. 6 and the plus 1, and those are all like terms in themselves, correct? Perfect. Okay, so the ones in the squares, the 7x and the minus 3x. 7 minus 3, that's 4. 4x. Correct. And check out the ones in the circle. Plus six, plus one. That'd be seven. Uh, plus seven? Yeah. Yep. Plus seven. So four X plus seven. That's a lot simpler than what it started as, isn't it? Right, and that's the answer. Uh-huh. That's that's the expression simplified. We're okay. not really trying to get an answer. We're trying to just make the big long algebra mess simpler. Simplify. Okay. Simplified, right. Yeah, and the directions will usually say that. They'll say simplify this expression. And that just means write it the same thing, only simpler. Okay, let's look at another one with a minus sign and I'll let you guys try it. Okay, so negative 2x plus 9 minus, and then in parentheses, 5 minus 3x. Okay, and I'll give you a second to try it, and then we'll do it. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong. Where the parentheses are, two negative creates a positive. So I would rewrite that yes. as the positive, correct? Correct. Okay. So that minus there has to go to the five and that minus there has to go to the negative three and the two okay. negatives right here are going to make a positive. Yep. So I'm going to write it down here too. Do I still keep the parentheses or no? You can leave the parentheses off. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't really hurt anything if you keep them there, but once you're done with that minus sign, you might as well leave them off. They just get in the way. So I think I just did this hey. wrong. I'm about to show you. Let me see here. Am I on there? It's hard to know, isn't it? Yeah, you are. So you got... Yeah, I'm showing 
Wait. Okay, I don't have it finished, but I have the first step here. Okay. Yeah, negative two x, so we match on that part I saw. Part of it we matched on anyway. Negative two x plus nine, and that minus sign goes with the five, makes minus five, and that minus sign goes with the minus three x, makes plus three x. Okay. That's where I went and wrong. I put a plus in front of the five instead of after it. Does that even matter? Oh. It does matter. It will. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Okay. So once you get this part, then you start looking for the like terms. Look at which ones you can box up and which ones you can put in circles. I'm going to box up the X terms and circle up the number terms. And that really doesn't matter. That just helps me visualize it. Okay. When I combine up those x terms, minus 2x plus 3x, minus 2 plus 3, that makes 1x. And now do the numbers, plus 9, minus 5, 9 minus 5, that's four. Four. Yep. Plus four. One X plus four. four. And some people show the one, some people leave the one off. It doesn't matter. You can do it either way. Okay. It got so easy. Thank you. Well, well it takes really help. You're doing, you guys are doing great. And I'm proud of you for hanging in and doing it you it's this is hard this is hard work and yeah you're doing a good job okay you want another one uh sure sorry i don't want to take up your whole lesson i know you're on limited time no yeah, no i this is this lesson is about polynomials i want to be sure you know the vocabulary there but that that's the whole point of this is for you to have a chance to work and to talk it through with other people. One, you know, one thing about doing math online is you never get a chance to, you know, turn to somebody and say, hey, did you get this? Or how'd you do that one? Exactly. So that's, that's the whole idea here. And that's why um, they're trying to put these sessions in. So you have a chance to talk with people. Okay, here's... I'm going to make a, a tougher one. Okay, so here's the problem. Two functions, and you have to subtract them. The first one says f of x is x squared plus 6x minus 4. The second function, 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. And the question is find f of x minus g of x. So on a problem like this, and the reason I'm doing this is because I know in the assignment there's one that's like this and everybody misses it because it just looks, it almost looks like a different language, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So just ignore, yeah, just ignore this part for a minute. That's just telling you the name of the function and the name of the function. And we're going to take the first one and subtract the second one. So when you write it down, just write down x squared plus 6x minus 4, that's f of x, minus, and then put parentheses and put the next one, 3x squared plus, minus 2x plus 1. And do just like we were doing. Oh. Okay, I'll give you a few minutes to try it. I know it looks like a monster, doesn't it? <laughs> I'll give you a few minutes to try it. It's, it's not, it's just what we were doing. 
Oh man. It's exactly what you guys were just doing a second ago. Okay, I'm gonna move this and I'm gonna start it, okay? Do you guys have it down? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I need a whole new page though. So when there's a like term left out by itself, what do we do with that? You just leave it alone. But I think on this one, everything's going to pair up. Here's the first step. Check out the signs there. The first three terms I just copied down, x squared plus 6x minus 4. But when I subtract, everything in those parentheses I made the little arrows so I would do it minus 3x squared minus minus the 2x that's what the plus 2x and minus 1 check out those signs right here uh, wait there where are they <laughs> here they are this one this one and this one those are the signs where people mess up yeah okay. just make sure that makes up. sense so where do you have yeah. the arrows? So, is that the answer that you came up with? Or well, is that part of the, the arrows are, again, that's, it, it's I know you're not looking for an answer. It's just you're looking for a summed up, but. Right. So, but when you have a subtraction and the parentheses there, you have to subtract each term. So I'm going to go minus 3x squared. Got that here. I'm going to go minus negative 2x. That's where this comes from. Minus negative is plus 2x. And minus 1, that's where that comes from. Okay. okay check out those signs. You have to go real slow and careful. And once you've got that part, then it's what we were doing. You look for the like terms that can combine up. I see some x squared terms that'll combine up. I see some x terms that'll combine up. And I see some constant, that means just plain numbers, terms that'll combine up. I'm gonna take my colored pins and circle them and square them and stuff. Let me see here. I see a one x squared and a minus 3x squared. I see a plus 6x and a plus 2x. And I see a minus 4 and a minus 1. Okay, so now I can combine up those like terms. Plus 1x squared, I added in the 1 just because it helps my mind see what to do. Plus 1x squared minus 3x squared plus 1 minus 3. Hello, did somebody join us? I don't know. I heard a ding dong. Did you guys hear a ding dong? Yeah, there's somebody in here. I guess so. <laughs> okay, so plus 1x squared minus 3x squared. That makes minus 2x squared. So the first part is going to be minus 2x squared. And that's from what's in the circles. Plus 1x squared minus 3x squared. Now in the green squares, I see plus 6x and plus 2x. Plus 6x plus 2x. 6, 2, that's plus 8x. 
And now the part that I underlined, minus four, minus one. If you're at negative four and you subtract one, it gets smaller. It gets farther away from zero. Negative four minus one is negative five. So the blue underline is negative five. Okay. That's as hard as the problems are in this section. There's a problem that's like this on the assignment that you have to do, where it says it starts off looking like this, f of x equals and g of x equals, and it says to subtract them. So here's what you do. You just write down the first one, you subtract parentheses the whole second one, but those signs take a little bit of work. When you subtract, you have to subtract every term inside the parentheses there. That definitely is hard. Okay. The other parts in this um, section, there's a lot of vocabulary. Did, have you guys both gone through the section on polynomials? Yes. Yes. So there's some terms like binomials and monomials and yeah. trinomials. Yeah. Do we need to read what those mean? Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's look. So if you have a monomial, a monomial means one term. It's something like this, 5x or 20y squared, one term, nothing being added or subtracted to it. If you have a binomial, that means two terms. Something like that, 3y minus 8x. When you have a binomial, there's two terms. Make a guess, what do you think a trinomial is? Three or more. Good. Nope, try is three. A trinomial looks like this. Um, 4x squared minus 9x plus two. There's a trinomial, three terms. Okay. Okay. The monomial means one term. A binomial means two terms. A trinomial means three terms. Anything more than that, they just call it a polynomial. Okay. And these Perfect. are polynomials, but if you get really complicated with 10 different terms that don't combine up together. It's just called a polynomial. But binomials and trinomials, you'll, you'll see those in directions a lot. It talks about those. So you kind of have to know what those words mean. There's also, it talks about the degree of those polynomials. And that's easy. If you have something like this, Here's a trinomial, x squared plus 7x minus 2. There's a trinomial. This trinomial is degree 2 because the highest exponent right there is 2. Wow. If I have, uh, yeah, that's, it's easy. You just have to know what the words are asking you for. If you had something like this, x to the third power plus 6x squared minus 7x plus 8. Well, that one's got four terms. I, I've never heard of quadnomial, so I think they just would call it a polynomial. It's got four different separate terms that won't combine up because none of them match exactly. And it's degree 3. So when, when there's because, just an x, you put a 1 there, correct? When there is no number correct. and it's like x you can just add a one in your head? Okay. Yeah, yes. If it's X just by itself, then mathematicians get lazy and leave out those ones. You just assume okay. there's a one there. 
and x squared or x to the third. And um, again, the, the reason you need to know this vocabulary is just because when you read directions, you need to know what it's talking about. Okay. okay. The degree, the degree is just the highest exponent. Okay. <laughs> I feel so stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just, you just have to have it broken down is simpler. It's not, that's everybody doesn't know what that means. That's, you don't need to feel stupid at all. Nobody would know that. Okay. okay so what other, do you guys have more questions? Uh, no, uh, that was enough for me. I'm about to go and retake some of these tests since it's already in my head. So thank well, you. You're very welcome. And I'm glad that you joined in. All that right. Bye. Lily, no, you're Emily, right? Emily, yes. Bye. And, All right. Okay. Emily, good. Bye, Emily. Bye. And how about you, Lillian? Are you okay? <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's no more for me. I think uh, I'm kind of stuck on the FX. You went a little bit too fast for me, um, but I think that I can figure it out. Um, I was just a little bit okay. confused, so, so it went from X. When when you see it like this, it's it's just uh -huh. a fancy way of writing it. You know uh -huh. what? Just ignore the F of X. In the g of x it's just saying take the first polynomial and subtract the second polynomial okay so it's the top one minus the bottom one this part doesn't really make any difference okay so i was right the i ended up seeing a piece of this paper and then you went on to the next paper and i just saw the simplified version and so I right. was just a little bit confused how it got to that. I thought maybe I missed numbers and uh, terms, and I wasn't able to put it on my paper. But well, now I now I get now you got it. Well, I did it this way because I think on the assignment there's a problem that's written this way. It's written in function notation, and it's confusing. And it says f of x, and it gives you one. And it says g of x, and it gives you a polynomial. And then it says to subtract the two. Okay. So I on this one, the top one is f of x, the bottom one is g of x. When you subtract the two, here was the work for that. Okay. The top one. Are we going to be doing these study questions once a week? Um, we might. Be. They're doing all different ones. So I'm I'm going to do. I, I'm going to do it again, I don't know when, in probably in September. I'm doing them once a month or so, but we can do them anytime. And you can okay, I know find you out when, because it, yeah, it doesn't have to be with me. There's other math teachers, too, that are taking different sections. So you can join in anytime you want in any one, and everybody will be happy to help you. Okay. I mean, what makes this the hardest? 